Good evening. Welcome to the Collision Bible Study. I'm expecting to probably have a smaller audience tonight. I, I know that the Dodgers are playing the Braves right now, so I'm sure that many of you will be watching that. It's okay. I want to thank those of you that, are, that do join. I want to thank those of you that watch this later. Uh, I'm going to get right to it because we've got a lot to cover tonight. So let me open with a prayer. Father, as always, we thank you for your word. As always, we thank you for using your word to help our faith to grow. As always, we thank you, God, for laying it on the hearts of your people to uh, the desire to want to grow in their faith, to take the time to watch these videos. Uh, God, I, we pray that you, uh, that you do your work again tonight. Teach us. Uh, help us grow our faith. Amen. Good evening, John. I'm going to be reading from chapter 9 in Acts. This is a story of Saul, who is later called Paul. Okay, now Saul is the one that was persecuting the Christians. Uh, so we're going to, I'm just going to read through it because there's one verse that I want to talk about tonight. So there's a lot of reading, so stay with me. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was, breathing, was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Some interesting things here. Can even Brad? Uh, a few things that are interesting here is 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 number one uh, that he chooses someone like Saul who's murdering the Christians. Why would he choose him to be one of his apostles? And I believe one of the reasons because the I know from experience the further people are away from God when they come to know God, the more excited they are about their faith. So if Paul was that vehement against the Christians, he would be that vehement for the Christians. Second thing, he says, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He persecuting Jesus. He was persecuting the Christians, which tells us that Jesus, that we are Jesus. That's why Jesus says that we are the church. The church is the body of Christ. So he's telling Saul, why are you persecuting me? Good evening, Alicia. They've been traveling with Saul, stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a main nam, man named Tarsus, named Saul, for he, he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Amazing how at that time God kept using visions and spoke directly uh, to, to the people. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. This is what we're going to cover now later on. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, whom appeared to you in the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Marcy. So the, what I want to talk about here is... is he says, I'm going to show Paul, Saul, who later was Paul, how much he must suffer for my name. Wow. Um, now, Saul was persecuting the Christians, and now here he is going to be for the Christians. Uh, now, when Jesus called the apostles, the 12 apostles, you know, one of them betrayed him, but the others uh, came at a great cost. 
it came at a great cost. They weren't persecuted that much during like Jesus' life, but after Jesus left earth, they all they were persecuted mightily. They all suffered martyrdom, died terrible deaths. Peter hung upside down. Paul even was beheaded. Uh, they all suffered terrible deaths. Um, and that was the same for, for Paul. He tells Paul, I, I, he's, he's going he's gonna to suffer greatly for me. So, so listen to some of this now, that some of the suffering that Paul goes through here. I know I've read this to you before, but boy, listen to this. He said, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. A well, stone was a death sentence and he survived. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in the country, in the sea, and from false brothers. I've labored and toiled and have gone without sleep. I've often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. It goes on and on and on. So when, when, when Jesus tells Ananias, I've called him and to, to suffer much for me. Boy, he wasn't kidding. Paul suffered much for, for his faith. Now, we need to thank God that he hasn't called us to suffer like the early apostles or like Paul. Now, in many countries, as we shared before, that, that's not true. They, they do go through suffering in other countries. But thank God we don't here in America. But God has still called us to suffer just not as severely. We're going to talk about that tonight now, okay? We're going to talk tonight. Good evening, Cherry. Uh, good evening, Anna. We're, we're going to talk about the suffering that God has called us to do here today in America. In Matthew 5, 11 and 12, it says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because... Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, have you ever been insulted or verbally abused for your faith? If so, Jesus promises a reward for, for you. Now, I, I personally have been called narrow-minded uh, for my teaching. Because I teach that only the followers of Jesus, only those that give their life to Jesus, go to heaven. And I've been called narrow-minded by people, saying, well, how can you be so arrogant as to think that only you and Christians are going to heaven? What about all the other people in the world? Are you telling me that they're condemned to hell? And so they, 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 they don't just question. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're, they're vehement against that, that they consider me narrow-minded. Have, have you ever been insulted or anything for your faith? In Luke 14, 27, this is the important one now. In Luke 14, 37, Jesus says this, Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciples. And Matthew says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must pick up his cross and follow me daily. Uh, so Jesus tells us that we have a cross that we have to carry. No, he, obviously he wasn't talking about the cross that Jesus carried on the way to Golgotha. Obviously it wasn't that kind of a cross. So Jesus is talking about something else. He's talking about we all have crosses to bear in our lives. Uh, some of you have been in accidents. And, 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 and I know Alicia, you're, you're still suffering from, from that accident and you're in pain every day, especially at night, what Jesus is saying is if, you, if, you're a, a, if you're a follower of his, you have to pick up that cross of yours. It's a heavy cross, a heavy cross, but you have to pick it up and follow, keep following him, which is exactly what you're doing. Some of you have had illnesses. You've had cancer. You've had strokes. You've had different things. You, 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 God, Jesus tells you, don't quit. Pick up that cross 
and continue following me. Some of you have had deaths. Uh, some of you have experienced poverty. Um, Jesus is telling us that whatever ordeals that we're going through in our life, he doesn't want us to give up. He wants us to pick up those crosses and carry him. Now, I've talked plenty of right in the past few, this past week about John and Tanya Dantema, who lost their 19-year-old son. They could just give up, or they could pick up that cross, which is what they're doing, and continue following Jesus. And in their, and in their, their celebration on Saturday, I heard that they said that they thank God, both of them thank God for the 19 years that he gave them with their son. They picked up that cross and they continue to follow Jesus. I told you this morning about my, my nephew, Parnell and Mary. Parnell, that when they were first married and they just had the little baby, it was just a small baby. Ashley was just a few months old. And he, and he was severely burnt with zero chance of, of living. And, 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 and he suffered incredible pain. Uh, it... it third degree bodies on over 95% of his body uh, but he didn't quit and Mary didn't quit Mary stayed with him through it all and here it is now 30 some years later and 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 they're still together and they stuck it and they're carrying that cross and it's a heavy cross that he has to pick up heavy cross one of his hands is just a fake hand the other one they had no fingers. They took his two big toes and sewed his toes on so he can grab a hold of, of things. His, his back, his, his body is like leather. But he's never quit. He picked up that cross. So we may not have to suffer like the apostles or like Saul did, but God still tells us to pick up our cross and follow him. Those with terminal illnesses that have no chances of surviving. They still pick up that cross and they don't quit. They follow Jesus and that's what Jesus is telling us to do. Pick up your cross and follow me. In Romans 5, 3 and 4 tells us this. When you're able to pick up those crosses, then it says this. Let me find that verse 3 here. Just stay with me here. Okay. Not only we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character. When, when you're able to pick up that cross and follow Jesus, like the ones that I just use as examples, that, that gives them, they're able to persevere. They're able to get through the next one and then through the next one. And that gives them incredible character. Incredible. People respect you. They look up to you. They are willing to listen to you. That's the, we, the, we all have heroes in our life. Heroes in our life. People that we look up to because of their great faith. Now, Parnell and Mary are, are two of my heroes in my life. Two of the heroes in my life that I respect greatly because of everything they have gone through, not just for a, for a, a time, but for th over 30 years. Over 30 years, picking up that cross every day. He has to go to YMCA every single day to, to keep his body loose, to, to, to keep it functioning so it doesn't just tighten up and he can't move. It, 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 it's daily. And I shared this morning with... He shared at our church. They came on vacation to California, and he shared in our church. And boy, I love what he said. He said, I had a choice to make when this all happened. I had a choice to make whether to sit there and feel sorry for myself and make it miserable for everybody around me, or whether to accept this, accept this as, as, as a cross that God gave me, and not complain and make it easy for other people around me. And that's exactly what he's done now for over 30 years. He's my hero. He's my hero. Romans 8, 17 tells us this. Now we are children of God. I tell you that all the time. And we are also heirs. Heirs of God. Co-heirs with Christ. I tell you that all the time. But, but listen to this. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. 
we're his children when we're willing to pick up our cross, when we're willing to accept the persecution, the suffering, the insults, whatever it is, we're willing to accept those. Uh, it's like your own children. Uh, are they willing to go through the hardships with you? Because that's what Jesus is telling, God is telling us here. Are you willing to go through these hardships? If you are, then you're my child. Grace, your, your boys have gone through the storms with you. They've gone through storms with you. Veronica, your girls have gone through storms with you. Alicia, your boys and girls have gone through storms with you. They haven't abandoned you. They stayed with you. They went through them with you. It even helped you to go through them. And that's what God is telling us here. We're his children when we're willing to do that same thing. When we're willing, we, can't just, we can't just accept all the good times. We have to take the bad times too. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4 tells us this. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Now, this is important, okay? We get these trials in our life. We get these trials in our life so that we're better equipped to help others when they go through the same kind of trials. That's why God, God allows those trials in our life. He allows those things to happen in our life. And he expects us to pick them up and carry them every day. Because then we will relate to others that are going through the same thing and have sympathy for them. Um, I, I'll use Grace, Alicia, Veronica, Irene. You're willing to help the poor because you know what it's like to have nothing. You, you care about the homeless because some of you have slept in your car in a, in, in a park because you had no place to, to sleep. So you identify with them. You have passion for them because you've gone through the same thing they've gone through. Liz Polk, is, if she's watching this, had severe cancer in, 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 her, in her brain. And now whenever she's, I see her on social media, whenever she hears of someone that has cancer, immediately she's there praying for them and, and, and concerned about them. That's why God is able to use us. That's why God was, I'm convinced that's why God just wanted to use Paul. Because you could ask yourself, now why would God want to use Paul who was killing Christians? Because he saw the fire in Paul. He saw the devotion, the dedication of Paul and knew that if he converted him over to his side, that he'd be just as fervent for him. And that's exactly what Paul was. So God wants to use you. God wants to use you in, in, in mighty ways. In Galatians 6, 2, it tells us this, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. God doesn't just expect us to lift, to lift carry our cross God also wants us to help others to carry their crosses now it's hard enough carrying our own cross but God wants us to carry other people's crosses and I've learned this the hard way when you are going through something tough and you see someone else going through something tough and when you leave when you leave put behind your concerns and help the other person it takes the, your eyes off of your own if you just stay with your own concerns, you, 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 you're almost like pitying yourselves, yourself. But when you take your eyes off yourself and look to others and help them carry their crosses, then it takes the eyes off of you. God expects us to, to help others to, to carry their cross, or their crosses. 2 Timothy 3.12 tells us this. In fact, everyone, everyone, who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you are serious about your faith, you're serious about being godly, godlike, then you will suffer persecution. Why? Because you'll be out there helping others. And you'll get persecuted, you'll get ridiculed for it, you'll be you get taken advantage of, you get used, but you don't stop. 
you 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 keep on you keep on helping others you because that's who God is so you keep on doing it first Peter 4 I think I forgot the market here so hold on here first Peter 4 let me read this therefore since Christ suffered in his body arm yourselves also with the same attitude have the same attitude that Jesus had same attitude that he had willing to pick up his cross willing to carry the cross for others not for himself for others he didn't die for himself he died for others he wants us to have that same attitude and then in 510 and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast when you're willing to do that Jesus is right there with you it's like your children I use examples of your children when your children are willing to walk through the storm with you they're willing to to, to sleep in the car with you they're willing to go hungry without complaining because they know you're doing everything you can when they walk alongside of you oh, they're precious they're precious. You can't take your eyes off of them. When you're willing to walk alongside of others, it's like walking alongside of Jesus and you're precious to him. And he can't take his eyes off of you. And he promises that, he, that he'll reward you, that he'll make you stronger. So we all got crosses. To, we all got our own crosses to bear. And Jesus, Jesus tells you, pick him up every single day. Don't quit. Pick him up and follow him. And then help others carry their crosses. So the question I have is, what, what trials are you going through? What's, what's the crosses you have to bear? We all have some. Are you willing to pick them up? Are you willing to pick them up and keep, keep following Jesus? Are you willing to help others carry their crosses? The, I, I like, I looked up the word Christian. Always, always, we, we use that word all the time. And Christian, I thought, I always thought it meant Christ-like. It, it's not the meaning, it's from Christi, Christias in the, in, the, in, the, in the original language, that it means a follower of Christ. A Christian is a follower of Christ. Now a follower of Christ is someone that is Christ-like. So it's still Christ-like, but it's because you're a follower of Jesus. So if Jesus picked up his cross, as well as the apostles, as well as Paul, then we need to do the same. We need to pick up our crosses daily and follow Jesus. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I just love the word. I love the word. Uh, we're going to continue going through Acts on Thursday nights with our Bible study. Uh, if, if you're with me, share these videos so it can go to your family and friends also. Uh, remember now, tomorrow morning, we'll have our devotion at 8 o'clock as always. Let me close with a prayer. Father, what an amazing God you are. The fact that you were willing to lower yourself to a human and come here on earth and suffer and die an incredible death so that we could put our faith in you and spend eternity with you. What, did, what an example you were to us. Jesus, what an example you were to us. Apostles, what an example you were to us. Paul, what an example you were to us. Uh, we're Christians. We're followers of Christ. And we want to be Christ-like. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining me. Serena, good evening. Thank you for joining me tonight. God bless you. Uh, have a great day. And I guess go Dodgers, except I'm an Atlanta Brave fan. But let me just explain why I am. I grew up in North Dakota. Way back in the 60s, the only team around was the Milwaukee Braves. Hank Aaron, Joe Adcock. All those, all those old timers that I grew up with, uh, Willie Mays from the Giants, 
and I used to listen to them on the radio and it would come in and out and I could just barely catch the game. So I was always a Milwaukee Brave fan. And then they moved to Atlanta and Hank Aaron moved there with them. Now even Hank Aaron, my favorite all-time player, I named my son after him, Aaron. Everybody thought I gave him a biblical name. I named him after Hank Aaron. So I've stayed with the Braves all this time. I've been a Braves fan. So it's not that I'm anti-Dodgers, I'm just a Braves fan. A little, little, that won't cost you anything extra. <laughs> Have a great night. See you tomorrow morning.